How do we send things from Earth to space? Well, as most of you know, we have to use rockets. Very big rockets, actually. But leaving Earth is easier said than done. It takes a huge amount of thrust to overcome the gravitational pull of the planet and make it into space. And so, an overwhelming amount of space in the rocket is used for fuel storage and not for bringing items into orbit. Let's take the Saturn V rocket as an example. At 111 meters tall and a weight of 2.8 million kilograms, it is one of the biggest rockets ever made. Yet, only the tip of this massive rocket can be used for sending items to space. This is called the payload. It can carry up to 118,000 kilograms which may seem a lot, but that is only 4% of its total weight. And so, if you want to send things to space, you need to consider two factors. One, how heavy is the object? And two, how big is the object? How much space does it take? Now, this has caused many problems in the past because telescopes tend to be very big. So how did researchers tackle this problem? One word answers this question, origami. Surprising, isn't it? Well, let me convince you with two examples. First, the James Webb Space Telescope, which you are seeing right now. This is the next big advance in astrophysics, and it's extremely important. But due to its size, it doesn't fit unfolded in the rocket compartment. However, using origami, Researchers have been able to develop the telescope in such a way that it unfolds itself once it reaches space and then takes its true form in its full size. Let's have a look at another cool project called Starshade. Again, this instrument is far too big to fit into the rocket, but by smartly folding it up using origami, researchers have been able to shrink it down to a size that now fits into the rocket. This flower-shaped screen that you're seeing unfolds itself in space and will then be used to cover up light from stars in order to find exoplanets. This star shade is taller than a 15-story building, just to give you an idea of the actual size of it. And today, to show you how origami is used and works, in real life, we'll be making our very own starshade. And so, you need to get yourself a pair of scissors and a ballpoint pen. And the first step is you're going to cut around the rim of the starshade. You can see dotted lines. Now this video is going to speed up so feel free to pause it at any time until you finish the steps. All right, you should be left with your star shade template like this. Cut it carefully along the, red the dotted lines and you will see that there is orange lines called valley folds and blue lines called mountain folds. Now valley folds, as the name indicates, would be folded inwards, so towards the ground and the mountain folds would be folded outwards. And you can use a ballpoint pen for the valley folds but make sure that the ballpoint is actually retracted. And what you want to do then is use the empty ballpoint pen to go along the orange lines, go along the outline and really crease the paper in. Using the pen, put some pressure on those lines. Really emphasize putting it in. And then once you've done that, you can try and start folding it. So in a similar fashion that I'm doing, you want to use your finger to put pressure on the page and fold it 
in to the valley fold onto the orange line as precisely as you can and follow the line all the way down. So you want to make sure you really are following the line as precisely as you can and you want to really emphasize the creases so really push it in to make sure that the fold is a strong one because this will be important later on so take your time and really push it in and go the whole way along the red the orange line even you'll notice that the orange line goes past through the center so into the hexagon so you want to get that part as well and you can use a pen to help you doing that because it can be quite difficult to get that fold in the middle Again, really emphasizing all the folds and you want to go back over the fold one more time to make sure it's a strong one. So these are called the valley folds, so they fold inwards. Really creasing it in. This will be very important when we come to actually fold the star shade. Once you're done the valley fold, you can move on to the next fold, which is the mountain fold. Now, unlike the valley fold, this actually folds outwards, so up. You can use your two fingers to, put, to really just push it in. The mountain folds tend to be a lot easier than the valley folds. And again, same kind of principle, you want to go along the line. Take your time doing this and follow the line all the way down and really crease it. All the way down to the center. And again, you want to emphasize those creases and follow the line slowly all the way up as I'm doing. And so, You've got valley folds and mountain folds going all the way around the circle and you're going to want to do all of them. So you can see why it's called the mountain fold, it goes up and the valley fold goes down. So then you follow the same procedure all around the circle and get all the valley folds done and all the mountain folds done. All right, when you're done doing all the folds, good job by the way, because it is quite a long job, you can now start uh, to try and fold the actual star shade. So first thing you want to do is re-emphasize the hexagon in the middle with the ball point pen. This will help you fold. So go along the lines of the hexagon in the middle, the orange lines, and really crease them in with the pen. Once you're done that, now you're going to try and fold star shade on itself. So what you want to do is use two fingers on either valley folds on the side and then one finger under into the mountain fold. That way you can pinch, you can really pinch a mountain fold and two valley folds on the side and kind of fold them inwards. And you can help yourself by putting a finger in the hexagon in the middle to keep it stable. And you want to go around the shape and try and grab mountain fold after mountain fold and fold it in and bring it in on itself. Now this part is quite tricky and it takes quite a bit of maneuvering but eventually after a bit of time the, fold, the folds will, 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 uh, will actually go in.
so it can be quite tricky to just fold them all in going on one side. So what can work quite well is bring a few mountain folds together on one side, bring a few mountain folds together on the other side, and then kind of try and bring them all together. That's what I'm kind of doing there. And as you can see, eventually it seems to fall in on itself. I just put in a little bit of pressure and it'll shape in to the star shade. There, once you have it like that, that's your finished product. You want to kind of shape it a little bit more though. So what you're gonna do is take it and put it in your hands, and squeeze it a little bit, just a little, little, little squeeze, not too, not too tight, but enough to make it stay in shape. So otherwise it'll just open itself back up. So a little squeeze. And there you go. That's the star shade finished. So now you can see how we went from having a very large disc and we folded it on itself and now it's taking much less space. And now with this optimized size, what previously couldn't fit in a small rocket compartment can now fit in the rocket compartment and take full size once it reaches space. So now you see the power of origami. So let me show you how it opens up. Take either opposite sides and just pull and it'll wrap itself up. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed learning about the many ways in which science and art can sometimes work together. <laughs>